In fact, all problems per se begin at the level of conflict between rules and experiences. Take an example of, let's say I've taken a birth in a family where vegetarian food is the only kind of food which is accepted. So my rule says only vegetarian food. My experience says vegetarian food is pleasurable and with non-vegetarian food, zero experience. Correct? I go into a restaurant where non-vegetarian dish is being served. I look at the dish. I have to make a decision should I eat or not. Is it too difficult to make this decision? No, because my mind looks at the conscious mind. It says rules, no non-veg. Experience, neutral. It's easy to make that decision. <coughs> if I were born in a family where non-vegetarian was allowed, and I have had a pleasurable experience eating chicken tikka. And I go to a restaurant where chicken tikka is being served. What happens? My rule says it's nice. Experience is safe. It's pleasurable. <laughs> so what do I do? I eat it? Yes. Again, is there a conflict? No. But well, what if I took a birth in a family where non-vegetarian food was allowed? Are any of you who are a part of any spiritual groups? Some of you? So, I go into the spiritual group, I become a part of this group and my teacher tells me, if you want to become spiritual, you have to quit non veg non veg for teacher. Now what do I do? So I consciously decide, itna kharcha kiya hai, aake baitha hoon, kuch to sense over. So let's say I quit non -veg. I go to a restaurant where now chicken tikka is being served. <laughs> now what happens? So I go to that place, I see the chicken tikka. I'm going away from it, but I'm not able to avoid my take my eyes away from it. Then after some time I go back and I say, Khane se mana kiya hai. <laughs> to kari sakta. And this continues till the next few moments. When, on next few days, when one of my friends comes and tells me nothing about missing something. Chicken tikka is like heaven. <laughs> now what happens? See, remember, the mind doesn't like conflicts. It has to resolve the conflict. The problem is, it can't go back and change the experiences. Because the critical filter would not allow it to do so. So the only thing that I can change is my rule. So what do I do? So I ask myself, why do I want to quit non -veg? Because my guru has told me to quit. Why do I want to listen to my guru? <laughs> because I want to become spiritual. And what is the purpose of becoming spiritual? Because I want to go closer to God. But isn't it God in the first place who decided I should take a birth in a family where non-vegetarian food was allowed? <laughs> so how can I go closer to, closer to God by defying his own wisdom? So what do I do? So I say, you know what, since I want to become spiritual because I want to experience love, I want to experience oneness. It's all about love, it's all about oneness. What is veg, what is non-veg, it's all in the oneness. <laughs> right? So I go back to eating non veg daily. Which is still fine, it doesn't really end up creating such a problem. But think of smoking. What happens with smoking? So I've been smoking for a long time. My rule initially said, let's try, there's no harm in it. I'll quit if I have to. As I started smoking, I started liking it. My experiences became, every time I smoke, I feel relaxed. I feel good. Somewhere down the line, I realized it's reached a state where I'm not able to control it. So my friends or doctors or family finally told me, you have to quit. I even tried. So how do I try? So let me give you another example of smoking. So let's say I had been smoking. I come across this girl that I start liking. And this girl tells me, you know Nitin, you're a good person, but I can't be with you because you smoke like a chimney. <laughs> I can't really be with you. So what do I tell you? You know what? I love you so much, I'll stop smoking from today. Now the next day I get up in the morning, the first thing I realize is, without smoke, I can't even get a problem. But you know what? Love is blind, love is deaf, at least in the initial time. <laughs> so what I decide? I said, Koini, I love her a lot, I'll quit. So I don't smoke. I even give her a call and I tell her, that you know what? I love you so much that I have not 
smoke today. I come to my college. As I come to my college, I see some of my friends with me. No, nine tells me, listen, you are missing. When I say no, love, no. Firstly, I decide to stick to no smoking policy. Then in the evening, maybe I see a couple of girls who are smoking. And one of them comes and offers a cigarette. Now what do I do? Love. <laughs> you know, I, I like this girl. I really love her. I would want to be with her also. But then, why does she want to change me in order to be with me? You know, did I ask her to change herself? There are so many things that I don't like about her. Did I go and tell her you should do this, you should not do this? No, I don't. So if I am willing to accept her for what she is and who she is, shouldn't she do the same thing for me? But that said, you know, I like her, I love her, I don't want her to feel her. So what, you know, I'll save her of the trouble. I'll smoke but I'll not tell her. And then that's what printers are meant for, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what do I do? I go back to smoking without worry. When you go to doctors and attend, doctors will tell you that you have to quit smoking, otherwise you will die. People try. No one wants to live that life. But why do they go back to smoking is because they are not able to quit. And when they are not able to quit, in order to resolve the conflict, then they start justifying it to themselves by saying, Manas is not quitting. Can you give me a guarantee that I live longer by not smoking? No, so if I have to die, I may as well enjoy. Not realizing that it can end up creating a lot of problems. Yes? And that's where hypnosis becomes a very important aspect of what we're doing. Because what hypnosis does is it gives us the ability to bypass the critical filter and send the information directly into the subconscious. So that you can modify that information where it exists. Now as the information starts changing, your beliefs, your critical filter is powered by those experiences, right? As the experiences change, your belief starts becoming weaker. And as your belief becomes weaker, it's easier for you to believe in you. 